Hello everyone, my name is Muzna Khan and I'm going to present our work comparing forced oscillometry technique with spirometry while measuring airway resistance with or without restriction. Here is the disclosure information about the authors that were part of this project. As you all know, direct spirometry is the standard when it comes to diagnosing obstructive lung disorders. Direct spirometry also informs on restrictive lung diseases but requires body indirect spirometry like plethysmography to confirm restriction. Moreover, results obtained from spirometry are very much dependent on patient effort and therapist instructions. Therefore, they can be variable. In addition, it is sometimes difficult to do in certain patient populations such as pediatric and geriatric patients. The forced oscillometry technique, on the other hand, is independent of patient effort. It utilizes small amplitude pressure oscillation superimposed on the normal breathing pattern. It is sensitive to airway obstruction when measured at lower frequencies. Therefore, FOT has been used to evaluate changes in pulmonary function in adult and pediatric population with obstructive lung disease and to a lesser extent in restrictive lung processes. We hypothesized that reactants measured at 5 Hz with FOT could be a more sensitive measure of lung restriction and decreased compliance than forced vital capacity measured by spirometry. This comparison of FOT with spirometry was done as a part of a parallel study to evaluate closed-loop logic of an oxygen delivery system in volunteers with and without chest restriction. We compared the sensitivity of X5 and FVC to evaluate the degree of chest restriction. We recruited eight healthy volunteers. Each volunteer had two measurements done, one with restriction and one without. Restriction was achieved by placing a corset-like belt around the thorax and tightened to decrease thoracic compliance by creating a chest wall restriction. We measured forced vital capacity and FEV1 with a portable cocos spirometer. Likewise, FOT was performed with Resmin Pro to measure airway resistance and lung reactants with or without restriction in each volunteer. These are the demographics for our volunteers. The age range was 22 to 33 years old with a mean of 27 years old. There were five male and three female volunteers and among these four were of Hispanic origin and four were non-Hispanic. All volunteers were screened prior to selection for pulmonary function disorders or abnormalities and non none of the volunteers had a history of any pulmonary dysfunction or symptoms at the time of the study. This is an example of the FOT done on one of the volunteers with and without chest restriction. Measures of resistance and reactants are taken at 5, 11, and 19 Hz frequency over 10 breaths throughout the respiratory cycle. In the bar graphs, inspiratory, expiratory, and total resistance and reactants are reported at 5 Hz. The graph on the left shows airway resistance here, and the solid black line identifies the upper limit of normal for resistance. The dotted black line identifies the predicted value of resistance. The solid gold bars are baseline and the hatched bars are measures with chest restriction. In this subject, there was no difference in resistance with or without restriction. The bar graph on the right are the measures of reactants at 5 Hz. The purple bar is baseline and the hatched bar is post restriction. The subject shows a minus 1.8 centimeters of water pressure per liter per second decrease in reactants with chest restriction. The Goldman graph at the bottom shows the average resistance and reactants measured at the three frequency over the 10 breaths. The black line, the black solid line is the upper limit of normal for resistance and the dashed black line is the lower limit of normal for reactants. Here you can also see the change in reactants post chest wall restriction. The results shows that there was a significant decrease in forced vital capacity between baseline and restriction with a mean value of 5.53 liters without restriction and 3.83 liters with restriction. Similarly, the difference between lung reactants was also significant with a mean reactants of minus 0.85 centimeters of water pressure per liter per second without restriction and minus 1.58 centimeters of water pressure per liter per second with restriction. Airway resistance did not show any significant changes with means of 3.04 centimeters of water pressure per liter second without restriction and 3.51 centimeters of water pressure per liter per second with the restriction. The difference between FEV1 and the ratio of FEV1 to FEC were also not significant between baseline and restriction. The ratio also shows that the volunteers did not have any evidence of obstructive lung disease. 
In addition, the average change in FVC was 28%, while for X5 it was 118%, suggesting that FOT and reactants are sensitive measures of changes in compliance and resistance. We were able to conclude that measurements done with FOT to assess pulmonary function were reproducible, required minimal effort, and instruction. Furthermore, lung reactance at 5 Hz correlates well with decrease in chest wall compliance that results in a restrictive process as compared to spirometry. Moreover, since lung reactance measured by force oscillometry seems to be more sensitive to changes in respiratory system compliance, it could be useful in following patients who have had COVID-19 illness and continue to suffer from dyspnea. The technique also offers less potential for aerosol generation and can be done in subjects who complain of dyspnea. I would like to take this opportunity to thank AARC for giving us the opportunity to present the findings of our study. I would also like to thank my co-authors for their work and support on this project.